Hey there, it's CJ Willie and I'm cracking a pack today. I'm back with pack number three in my 1988 Tops Mini Leaders box. I'm trying to see how many packs I have to crack to get all 77 cards in the complete set. I've included the link to the preview video in the description below which gives a little explanation on the set and the highlights of what I could pull in cracking these packs. Since each pack has only seven cards, I'll guess which category or categories the player led their league. Now I'll flip over the card to see if I was right or how very bad my memory was of the 1987 MLB season. So let's get out our next pack. So this is pack number three. And we'll take a look at our my nifty checklist that I created to track as I go along. All right. So let's get down here and mark off pack number three. And thus far, uh, looking at it, we've got two Hall of Famers so far, Paul Molitor and Robin Yount. And two packs into it, we haven't got any duplicates. So that's pretty good. All right, let's get to cracking this pack and see how well my memory serves me in the 1987 Major League season. So I'm not going to cheat by looking at the bottom card of the pack, because then that would make the trivia no fun. So I'll hurry and flip this over. We got our spring fever reminder card. Okay, let's get started. Mike Scott. So uh, 86 was the season where the Astros made it to the playoffs against the New York Mets. Mike Scott pitched the clinching game for the Astros against the Giants, throwing a no-hitter. Um, there are some allegations over the years that Mike Scott scuffed up the baseball, but I mean, he had a pretty decent run, came up with the Mets, got traded to the Astros. Um, I'm going to say in 87, uh, he was a league leader in wins and ERA. I might even go with complete games as well. Shutouts. Why not try for four? Okay. Uh, strikeouts. I didn't pick that one. Uh, but victories, he was tied for third with 16 victories. Um, so, number 51. Get that marked off the checklist. Next is Jack Morris, recent Hall of Famer. Made it in through the Veterans Committee. I think that uh, Jack Morris got hosed. He should have been voted in by the writers. Um, if you ask a lot of players during the decade of the 80s, Jack Morris was a bulldog. Um, he was a competitor. He pitched complete games. Um, yeah, sure, he had a higher ERA, but remember, he pitched in the American League. Back then, you had American League umpires and National League umpires. And American League umpires were notorious for squeezing the strike zone. Uh, and there was a lot more offense with the designated hitter as well. So Jack Morris, in my opinion, was definitely a Hall of Famer and shouldn't have had to wait to be inducted with the Veterans Committee. Morris, coming off the 87 season, which the Tigers made it to the playoffs, my guess is that he probably led the league. I'm going to be pretty sure in this. Wins and at least complete games. Um, I think, no, that was 86 season when he pitched a no-hitter. So uh, we're going to go with victories and complete games. Well, I got tied for fourth with victories, but I didn't pick up ERA or strikeouts. So... Um, you know, 1811 record with a 338 ERA. Um, I mean, nowadays a 338 ERA is awesome for a pitcher. Back then, you know, it wasn't as great as, you know, now. Okay, so let's mark off Jack Morse, 11. So another one of our Hall of Famers. Dion James, outfielder with the Braves. Um, he was a flash in the pan, mainly was a backup outfielder for a number of years. My guess on here is it's probably stolen bases. I'm going to go out on limb and say triples. Nope. I struck out on Deion James. Hard to remember, I suppose. Tied for fourth with doubles and fifth in batting average. And he got a nice little note about tenth in on-base percentage. So, yeah, my memory wasn't so great with Deion James. Next up, we have Juan Samuel. Uh -huh. He probably led the league in strikeouts. I mean, he was a free swing and second baseman. Um, though he did get a lot of triples and doubles, um, and hit for a decent average, you know, compared with the strikeouts, he was a speedy guy as well. So stolen bases. So I'm going to say doubles, triples, stolen bases for Juan Samuel. Doubles. Okay. So I got fourth, uh, tied for fourth with doubles and tied for fifth with hits. 
Um, he did get 178. Oh, he ranked number one in triples. So although they didn't list it as one of these league leaders, which is really weird, I did get the triples and doubles. Missed on the hits. Uh, sixth in runs, ninth in runs about it in, and tenth in home runs. So 87 was quite a year for Juan Samuel. Um, I do remember him being a pretty good player. After a couple of years, he sloughed off quite a bit, um, but pretty good second baseman. What do you have stolen bases? Yeah, he had 35 steals, um, but you got to remember he had Vince Coleman terrorizing the league with 100 plus stolen bases each year, and so a lot of other teams ran as well. Uh, let's see, Juan Samuel. Got to mark him off. He's down here with the Phillies. Okay, another Hall of Famer. So Andre Dawson. Andre Dawson had an epic 1987 year. Um, he had a hard time getting a contract, if you remember, over the winter of 86 into the season of 87. The MLB owners colluded and really lowballed a lot of the uh, free agents. Andre Dawson basically had to beg for a job, which was very weird. He was an all-star outfielder with the Expos. Had a little bit of a down year in 86. Um, I think he agreed to like a blank contract and ended up getting maybe $500,000, $850,000. Uh, turned it into a 1987 MVP season. Uh, for me, this is going to be an easy one. Home runs and RBI, definitely, um, for Andre Dawson. Yeah, first in home runs, first in RBI. Uh, first tied with game-winning RBI and fifth in hits. Yeah, Andre Dawson had a fantastic season in 1987. Um, for me, definitely was a Hall of Famer. A uh, great player. Okay, so two Hall of Famers in this pack so far. There are 15 total Hall of Famers. Uh, next, we have the checklist. Not much to say about the checklist, but, you know, I couldn't have made my nifty checklist without having a great checklist. So... And it's one card that you have to have to complete the set, so I need it. All right, final card in the pack today is Mark Langston. Uh, Langston came up with the Mariners. The Mariners were an awful team in the 80s. They didn't start turning around until about the mid-90s and then into the early 2000s. Um, Langston was kind of their frontline pitcher. Dwelt in a lot of mediocrity with the Mariners until he got traded to the Expos and then the Angels and had some pretty good success throughout his career. I think he got pretty close to 200 wins. My guess here um, is that Langston probably was a league leader in wins, um, strikeouts. Um, I don't know that I'd go with ERA's, ERA, but I'll probably go with wins and strikeouts. Yeah, number one in strikeouts and number three in victories. So he had a pretty good year, 19 and 13 with the Mariners uh, with a 3.54 ERA. He was third in innings. Tied for third in shutouts and fourth in complete games, and then ninth in games started. So Langston was a workhorse for the Mariners. Pretty good picture. I mean, wasn't a Hall of Fame pitcher, but definitely was in the Hall of you know Good as a, a pitcher that lasted. I think he ended his career with the Padres in, in their run to the playoffs in the late 90s. Okay, my favorite card, the best card of the pack. I'm going to go with, even though you know it's a rival to my Cardinals, Andre Dawson with the Cubs. Um, oh, I got to mark off Mark Linkston. Getting too chatty and forgetting to mark off. Um, Dawson it is just a crime that he had to beg for a contract for the 1987 Major League Baseball season. He went on to have some great uh, years with the Cubs. I mean, spent the vast majority of his career early on with the Expos and then the Cubs. Uh, toward the end of his career, Spent some time with the Red Sox and the and the Marlins. He's still in Major League Baseball as an advisor. To me, um, you know, the owners colluding in 1986 really put a black stain on baseball. Um, and, you know, eventually it was found out that they colluded. Uh, but it unfortunately ended the career of a lot of players because they couldn't get contracts uh, during that year. And Andre Dawson, I think, is the prime example basically having to beg for a contract. I, I'm pretty sure he signed a blank contract that the Cubs could pay him whatever they felt during the year. And it ended up being like, I want to say $850,000 maybe, but definitely deserved, you know, back in that day, there were all, you know, all-star players, future Hall of Famers that are pulling in a million a year. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Also share with me in the comments what your favorite card or what you thought was the best card in the pack. Until next time when I crack the next pack of 1988 Topps Mini Leaders in my quest to complete the set.